What's up everybody, Andrew Steele here. Right now I'm at the RV Hall of Fame and want to give a huge thanks to one of my subscribers, Wes Campbell, for a generous donation that actually made this video able to happen. So let's go inside and see what's going on. my buddy Don Willard and he's giving me the whole low down here at the RV Hall of Fame. <laughs> Super cool vibes here, really friendly people and I am really excited to see what they have going on in here. It looks like this display is starting with the old and this is something I really like. Blood of Clayton Holmes. Very cool to see this low entry i don't think this would be very easy for my buddy big tony back in the day here this older one here an old shasta trailer how cool is this just the retro design i'm gonna be honest they used to have some serious style back in the day with all the wood this this old trailer has a really cool style to it and is this a bathroom oh my goodness all right guys i don't know this this would be a little bit tough but i could probably i don't know I'd, it'd be tough but i would make it work if i had to i absolutely love the exterior flow of this trailer just the the whole style is so cool the retro all right i see an old winnebago So this is a 1958 22 foot Airstream and they have this one roped off. I bet you this is worth a lot of dough. And fortunately I got really long arms so I'm able to get you guys a better shot. Nineteen fifty-eight Airstream here. It's a cute little design, but actually, I'm surprised at how much room is in this. I'm just leaning in here. I'm not a lot in, but it's a lot of room for as small as this trailer looks. It's very well thought out for nineteen fifty-eight. That timeless design will never get old. Let's see what's going on over here. So we're going way back now. <laughs> Wow, that's cool. So there's actually, so this is this is going way back. This is a 1916, it's called a telescoping apartment. And this was sold for $100 back in 1916. How cool is that? So it's got a living area here. This is like one of the first motor coaches, I would say. And then the dresser area here, something to a storage area on both sides. And these are actually probably the first slide outs. And it is a motorized camper as well. So this is really cool to see a 1916 RV. I'm eyeballing that old Winnebago back there. I'm looking forward to seeing that. So I'm just at the very beginning of this display here. And I'm really enjoying seeing all of this history firsthand here. So this is the Tennessee Traveler 1931 Model A Ford house car. This is actually a pretty big, pretty big unit. So very cool to see. And it actually even has like kind of a house, kind of a shape to it. So they were trying to make sure people knew that this was a living quarters, it seems like. They were making RVs in Indiana, even back in the thirties. This 1935 is from Putman County, Indiana. nineteen fifty Fleetwood Sporter. I had no idea that Fleetwood was around in nineteen fifty. That is cool. Holiday Rambler and Fleetwood were both making RVs in nineteen fifty four. Here and a nineteen fifty four Yellowstone trailer. Really cool design. 
rear bedroom back there this is actually a little bit bigger than uh the other ones i like the furnace like that's you don't see that in any modern rvs <laughs> that's actually a pretty cool like that's actually a pretty cool floor plan out of all of the rvs it's got a second entrance too so they were doing the two-door entrance back in 1954. This was a Highline trailer in the 1950s, and that makes sense because I can definitely see it. And things don't change. This was founded in Wakarusa, Indiana in 1946. They were doing big things back then. Here's a 1957 10-foot teardrop trailer. Super cool. Look at how much they get out of this. They've got storage back here, sleeping quarters. They're getting a lot out of that 12 feet there. All right, motorhomes. So the Fleetwood Bounder, a lot of you RVs got your start in RVing in a Fleetwood Bounder. This is a 1985. Let's go take a look, see how much has changed since then. Whoo. Oh yeah, nice and fresh in here. 1985 Fleetwood Bounder. I think we've all seen one of those at one point or another. And here is a 1966 Mustang travel trailer. And this was built in Bristol, Indiana. I don't know what that is back there, but that's cool. All right, this one does it for me. What is this? A 1937 Hunt House car. This was moving Hollywood. This was used in Hollywood movie cinematography. What? It's a little front kitchen. You got your driver's seat over there. A little closet right here. Rear sleeping area. A little uh, dining area. I'm not sure what that back area is used for, but it looks really cool. How about that rear profile of this? may west house car this is really cool to see motorized there was a lot of trailers back then and the trailers are really cool but i really enjoy seeing the older motorized units really simple but they were really doing cool stuff back in the day and i've actually seen a lot of these and i've wanted to see one of these in person uh for a long time this is super cool so this is a doesn't have a display on it, but I'm going to walk in it, try to get you guys some info. This is a 1977 GMC motorhome. Wow, I can't believe how nice this is in here. This had to be restored or remodeled, something, because this is super cool. Let me get the whole down low on this for you guys. <laughs> FMCA members Bob and Janet Prince didn't merely want to restore this 1977 motorhome. Once retiring after seeing much of the countryside in a 45 foot Prevo bus. They wanted elegance and quality and comfort in this 26 foot motorhome. It was estimated that over a half million dollars was spent on this tra transformation and interior, a hundred thousands towards the black exterior paint. Wow. This is super cool to see this old 1977 GMC motorhome that's just got every square inch of it is is decked out like a Prevo bus in here. So really cool to see this. Attention is getting pulled away. What is it? The West Point sticker? I see that. That's very cool. What in the world is this Star Streak? Built in 1988 using a 1976 Cadillac Eldorado chassis and a 1976 old Tornado 455 cubic inch engine. Ah, it's kind of dark in here. I wish the lighting was better for you guys. I'm trying to get you guys the best shots possible here. This is a 1928 Pierce Arrow Fleet house car. Oh, nice little John there. So this is a motor coach too. Nineteen twenty-eight. Can you guys believe that this was an RV in nineteen twenty-eight? So cool to see. Wow. Yeah, I can see how they dropped a hundred grand on this paint job. I don't see a Tau Designs emblem on it, but it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> oh, 
All right, all right. I'm not really sure what this is. This is a motorhome with a rear entrance here. It's a 1964 Clark Cortez motorhome. Very cool. Nineteen sixty nine Pacero. This was Fleetwood's first motorhome. How cool to see. I had no idea that Fleetwood was making a Pacero in nineteen sixty nine, and they still make them today. A little bit different than the uh, the new twenty twenty Paceros, but this is actually cool. Like in nineteen sixty nine, you've got a good size, good size living area back here. One of those small bathrooms. This is it, Fleetwood's first motorhome. You guys just saw it. 1954 Spartan Imperial Mansion, built in Indianapolis, Indiana. Unbelievable how, how many decades and decades of history are, are in the RV industry here in Indiana. And being here for the last week, I'm, I'm starting to learn, you know, that this, this RV, this is, this is in the DNA out here. This is part of their DNA out here. All right, so this is like the, this is like the tall cotton, the mobile mansion. Look at how like cool, they've got like heavy duty furniture up here. Little uh, bunkhouse, this was a bunkhouse model back in the day. I mean, this is, this is really cool. Look at the size of this bathroom. This is cool, like, and a huge, huge rear bedroom it looks like they had room for like a queen size bed it looks like it's taken out here but um this is this is really neat to see i had no idea that this type of stuff existed uh just just i'm just blown away right now and how cool this is so this is the original bunkhouse model this has got to be the first bunkhouse i've ever seen you've got your bunks you even got like a middle area here i wonder what they towed this with back in the 50s shoot i think the new rv companies need to to model this floor plan you've got a mid kitchen and then this huge living area up here so this was one of the finest mobile homes back in the 40s and 50s this is what they towed it with back in the 40s and 50s here A Studebaker, I love it. 14 a 1974 GMC motorhome that wasn't totally refurbished like that other one I just looked through. And this is a little more organic, original, all the browns and yellows and carpet. How about that orange carpet? Thank God they did away with these colors. <laughs> the yellow exterior hey maybe maybe they'll make maybe the kind of puke yellow will make a comeback you never know <laughs> oh cool 1967 winnebago motorhome cool did you see the organic style of these i'm i'm just really enjoying this a little rear living so they probably turned this back into a bedroom back in the day oh no you got a Another uh, a loft up here. So this is kind of an old innovative design. You've got a rear dining area with a bed above it. And I bet you that turns into a dining area as well. 1967, this was made in Forest City, Iowa. So Winnebago has been in Forest City since 1967. They're still there today. So if any of you have questions about Winnebago buying uh, Newmar, if they're gonna stay the same, they've been around for 50, 60 years. Thank you guys for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed the tour. And as I'm walking around in the RV Hall of Fame here, I actually saw one of my personal friends on the wall and I just have to give him a shout out and a huge thank you, Larry Huddle. Really good guy, was the CEO of Airstream for several years, actually a personal family friend of mine. Very good family that's done some very good stuff for the industry. Every person on these walls has done great things for the RV industry. So I'm just honored to be a part of it all. Just can't thank all of you enough for watching and a huge thanks to Wes Campbell and another huge thanks to our guy right here, Malin Miller. Another congratulations to the Miller family. Really excited for them. It's been a really exciting trip to uh, Indiana here and greatly appreciate all of you.